All right, everyone. So today's training um, video, we're going to go over the summary of benefits and pretty much how you would conduct the summary of benefits portion in a compliant um, sales presentation. And this is what you have to do for all your clients to review these. Um, I want to take time particularly into making sure that you folks understand um, the different even like intricate levels of each line because sometimes as we'll go into not everything is the same um, and we'll kind of you'll learn more as, as you do more of these and read more of the summary benefits because even though all of these benefits have to be standardized meaning that all the plans have to say how much it costs to go to the primary care doctor how much it costs to get an x-ray how much it costs to get um, hospitalized and all those things the uh, way they word some of the notes or the asterisks or the fine print portion vary very vastly and they also vary in the wording that they use so we'll go with this one this is a summary benefits for ohana i chose this one um, because they do have a lot of that um, line item and it's kind of a messy summary benefits so it's easier for us to navigate uh, something harder first and then um, we can go into the easier ones like uh, humana and united healthcare where there's our quite simple um, you know there, there's not much uh, notes on it or any kind of asterisks on it which can be deceiving but that's just how they um, how they uh, publish or print their summary benefits and it is up to us to kind of know what the intricacies are at that point but let's get into it so the summary benefits um, this plan currently uh, is only available in uh, Honolulu so the neighbor islands don't have access to this plan yet. This one is going to have to be in Honolulu. All Medicare plans have this long number uh, alpha attached to it. You need to know these, especially when you're filling out applications or doing them online because some plans, um, while they mostly have different names, some plans don't have different names. They just have different numbers. So. Uh, for the different plans of each company, you should at least have an idea of what these numbers are. Well, they talk about doctors, pharmacies, medication, Part D. Um, while during the summary of benefits portion, you don't have to talk about this. You do have to um, tell your clients or have the clients watch the video about you know, an, a PPO versus, versus an HMO, the benefits of staying in and out of a network how the drug plan works, part D, uh, the different tiers, the different coverage phases. So that's all covered in the video typically. Um, but when you look at this, summary benefits. Now this one notates what PA stands for. That means a prior authorization may be required. And an R requires you to get a referral. So the first thing we go, go through is a plan premium. Of course, you must continue to pay your part B premium as well. This deductible portion pertains to the medical deductible. So these plans have no medical deductible. That's for part A and B services. This as well, this maximum out of pocket responsibility inside the industry, we call it the MOOP. This one is 6,700. And like it says here, it does not include prescription drugs. So again, just like the deductible, the maximum out of pocket is also only pertaining to Part A and B services. In addition to that, um, all of these services have to be covered. So if you receive a service from the plan that the plan either doesn't approve or it's out of network, then you don't get uh, it added to the 6,700 maximum out of pocket. It's not considered a covered service or it's not considered um, part of a, you know, part of the plan's responsibility. <clears throat> all right so the medical and hospital benefits they start with the inpatient hospital and again there's a pa here which means that most likely if you are going to be admitted to the hospital you need a prior authorization the plan covers a specific number of days that's how they do it in medicare it's by the day it's not by the service and this plan has a 372 dollar copay for the first five days and after that it's free uh you know zero copay and the reason for that is if you take a look back at part a of medicare part a of medicare has the initial one time uh, about 1485 dollar deductible 
So if you times five and that, you get a, a little more than fourteen hundred dollars. Uh, so typically, if someone stays in the hospital for the five days, um, they would have paid less money if they stayed on original Medicare. But that's um, you know just a side note. How outpatient hospital coverage? So this is where a hospital. Um, has you in there but you're not considered admitted this is going to be 20 percent so all of these services can be done in the outpatient setting so instead of having a flat 372 dollars per day you will have a 20 percent coinsurance for all services received there and of course it requires a pa almost everything regarding the hospital requires a prior authorization hospital outpatient services so in the case of the emergency room, you will have to pay a $90 copay, and in addition to that, you have to pay 20% for any test or anything that they run that they don't consider an emergency room visit. So many times I've seen many of my, or not my clients, but other people's <laughs> clients have to pay, uh, you know, $90 copay and like an extra five or six hundred dollars in, you know, this 20% coinsurance. So if ever you get, you know, in, in an ER, you, you can tell your, this is what I tell my clients, um, you know, if you're in the ER, you can, you know, push for them to admit you because instead of paying 20% of all the fees, you will get a flat rate. And that's going to be typically better uh, than, you know, this 20% of some unknown cost. Ambulatory Surgical Center. Um, this is a separate place where you can receive surgery other than a hospital. Many of these are freestanding clinics, uh, like over on Baratanya and Ke'eamoku on Oahu. We have what's called the Halepava'a Tower or Halepava'a Medical Center, I think. And services on there, as of you know, last I heard, are considered ambulatory surgical center. Surgicare is another one that's over on Restaurant Row on Oahu. Uh, that you can get things for a little bit less all right now something more familiar we have doctor visits ohana is weird in the fact they have two tiers of networks they have an, a tier one doctor network and a tier two doctor network so to visit your primary care doctor on a tier one is uh, free zero dollar copay also i may say free but never use free uh, we're not supposed to say it's free we're supposed to say it's a zero copay um, <clears throat> tier 2 is $25 and again um, for this plan it's an HMO which means you will have to get a referral for practically everything except emergency and urgent care so uh, make sure you you know properly convey that to your uh, client because they will need to have a primary care doctor pretty much control all their medical services Next, we have specialist. You require a prior authorization for a specialist and a referral. Doesn't say you need a referral here, but I think prior authorization is uh, like a step above that. So that's probably why they list it. Tier one is 35 and tier two is 50. So these are um, <sighs> recently Medicare kind of fixed this, but before, if you were to see a PA, a nurse uh, physician assistant or nurse practitioner, the co-pays would be different. They've standardized all provider visits to be pretty much the same price now. So uh, before these professionals were considered a different class, but the co-pays are the same for both um, doctor, nurse practitioner, or pr physician assistant. Teladoc. So Teladoc, Medicare made it mandatory for Medicare plans to offer telemedicine. So for teledoc telemedicine, it's a zero copay per call, something to really uh, ask or to convey to your uh, client is that the teledoc service could be a separate mainland operating call center. The teledoc may not be their doctor. It may not be their specialist. It may not be anyone on the island. So even though it is a zero dollar copay, it may not be with their primary care doctor or any doctor they're familiar with. Next, preventative care. So all of these screenings are offered at 
no cost. The annual wellness visit is the one that they can get done every um, year. A lot of these other uh, preventative care services are offered at a, you know, either if they meet some sort of risk classification or maybe one once every three years, once every five years, once every lifetime. So make sure before you go in depth or are asked any questions of these things, you clarify which service it is because these services, I'll, I'll give you one that I uh, I learned a couple years ago was cardiovascular disease or cholesterol screenings. That's once every three to five years, depending on family history. That's not every year. Also depends on if you're on some kind of medication for cholesterol and the doctor needs to run labs for that. Those qualifications change uh, whether or not it's going to be a preventive care visit or diagnostic visit or maybe not even covered at all. So there you go. Next is emergency care. So $90 is an ER visit, just like above. If you're admitted to the hospital within 24 hours, you are waived uh, the $90 copay in lieu of the $372 inpatient stay copay. So you don't have to pay both. Worldwide coverage. So all Medicare Advantage plans are supposed to cover emergency services uh, worldwide. Um, keep in mind, though, that you have a $50,000 maximum. Um, and it's only for emergency services. So once they stabilize you, um, anything after that, you will pay 100% of urgently needed services this is an urgent care it's a 65 dollar copay again if you get sent to the hospital you don't have to pay for that same thing for urgent care and the worldwide coverage it's you know you're not restricted to the network in america no matter what your insurance is if you have a medical emergency the hospital or the um, urgent care centers is obligated to see but once they stabilize you they can um you know tell you you have to go somewhere else. Also, it is not uh, illegal or it's in the physician's purview to not see a patient if e even if they um, don't have insurance. So the physician will always be able to make a last call saying that, you know, I don't want to see this patient due to like scope of practice or anything. So you, you can't say that they absolutely have to see you it's just that they are not supposed to deny you because you you know your insurance is the wrong one lab services so the medicare approved lab services in this plan is a zero copay you do need a power authorization diagnostic radiology services this is the mri ct pet scans these are all 20 percent um co-insurance for your female um clients you know zero dollar for uh, mammograms and DEXA scans which is uh, can be very expensive so it's a might be something good for patients who have you know a DEXA scan coming up diagnostic tests and procedures basic and advanced so this is where I said it, it can d depend right so diagnostic radiology services is 20% your basic diagnostic tests and procedures are, is a $30 copay and then Therapeutic radiology services is a 20% coinsurance. This is the cancer, uh, the cancer uh, treatments and all of that. That can be pretty expensive. Outpatient x-rays, that's a $0 copay. So x-rays done inside the hospital could be more than this $0. They don't actually show it in here, but you can it's be safe to say that that Outpatient x-ray could be a 20% uh, coinsurance. After that, we go into the non-standardized uh, benefits. So hearing exam is a standardized hearing benefit. It's a Medicare covered hearing exam. This is very rare. Most people don't do this because they, um, it's just weirdly, uh, audiologists can't charge for this. Audiologists can only charge for this one. The routine hearing exam has to be done by a specific physician, probably um, a doctor who has um, the, the, the proper thing in his office. But most, for the most part, this is not done. Most of the hearing that my clients do is on the routine hearing, and most Medicaid Advantage plans cover it either really poorly or don't cover it at all. 
This time does cover it, but you need a PA and a referral. You also get a hearing aid allowance, two hearing aids per year, $2,000 maximum. Keep in mind that a lot of these extra services do have a lot of hurdles to go through. They might be offered by a third party located on the mainland who coordinates everything for the member over the phone. And again, if this member cannot hear well, um, he or she will probably need a, the assistance of a daughter, son, you know, family member to help them with this. Dental services. Dental services is something that a lot of people want. Now, a lot of people will join Medicare Advantage Plan because the dental. I always say, and I think I mentioned before, dental should not be the reason why someone joins a plan unless the plans are pretty much identical otherwise. For this plan, you get one cleaning every six months and a dental x-ray. So when it says one to every 12 to 36 months, these plans only run for one year. So it really is up to the plan because they can offer, they give you, you know, this PA thing to them, for them to decide if it's time for you to go in or not. Um, <clears throat> for fluoride, you'll get one every year. And again, you need a PA and a referral and most likely because under most dental plans, fluoride is only offered at no cost b before you're 18. I don't know if they would actually cover the fluoride here. Or for your, you know, standard 65 year old uh, Medicare enrollee. Comprehensive services for dental. If it's Medicare covered, there's only like six things that are covered under Medicare for dental. Those would be 35 for a tier one and 50 for a tier two. Comprehensive services. This plan has a dental benefit. I believe it's $1,500. They offer these services. They have a evidence of coverage, which will give you more detailed items that are covered. But typically you need to ask the plan for the, um, like I guess you could call it the um, coding of exactly what they cover because extractions is different. Emergency extraction versus standard extraction versus extraction with anesthesiology is all different codes and you need to know which one they cover. Eye exam, so Medicare covered eye exam. It's the diabetes retinopathy screening. <laughs> that's pretty much one of the only um, ones that's covered at no cost. Everything else is a specialist visit. And many eye exams are not covered under Medicare. So be sure, again, just like the hearing, if your member is gonna see the ophthalmologist for a routine eye exam, make sure that the ophthalmologist is performing the refraction test that's a zero copay if they're per, if they're doing other tests those may not be medicare covered and thus uh, they, their client will be charged full price which can be range anywhere between 150 to like 400 dollars i've seen uh, for those different eye tests mental health services so for mental hospitals the copay is 325 dollars per day for days one through five and then 90 days, it's a zero copay. And Medicare covers inpatient mental hospital stays up to 190 days for their lifetime. After that, uh, what happens is they have to bear all the costs. It's like one of those long-term care, uh, custodial care type deals. So they need to have a separate insurance policy that covers that. Outpatient mental services was $40 copay for both individual and group. And if they are partially hospitalized, it's a $55 copay and this is typically if they need to get you know meds um, ASAP into their bloodstream then it would be a partial hospitalization it'd be quite difficult though because this also requires a PA like almost everything else here skilled nursing facility is a zero copay for days 1 through 20 and then it's $172 after that SNFs or skilled nursing facility uh, copays or coverage is up to 100 days and then after that uh, there is no coverage because it's again just like the hospitalization it's considered long-term care and Medicare doesn't pay for long-term care so they need either another policy or um, they would have to pay 100% of the services or 100% of the um, cost therapy and rehabilitation $35 for tier 1 40 for tier 2 it's pretty much the same all the way until pulmonary 
pulmonary rehabilitation is $30 and uh, SET or supervised exercise therapy is another $30. To go on the ambulance, you need a 20 or $220 copay. Um, this plan doesn't have any transportation benefit. That's like if you could have a, a, a Medicar or one of those um, medical taxis take you to and from, you know, doctor's appointments or pharmacies. They don't offer that this year, and this plan actually never has. But there are plans that do, and some people would like them, some people don't. Again, it is a uh, non-standard Medicare benefit. Part D drugs, or Part B, I'm sorry, Part B drugs is a 20% coinsurance. This includes the chemotherapy and other Part B drugs. So anything that they receive in a clinic um, intravenously, typically, uh, is a 20% coinsurance. And of course, it requires a PA. Now we're going to the prescription drug portion. Prescription drug, this plan has a $100 deductible for tiers 3 to 5. So that means for tier 1 and 2, you don't have to pay through the deductible. Initial coverage stage. Um, you know, it's going to go up for 2022, but 4130 is what it is 2021. And these are the costs. So a standard mailing, preferred mailing, standard retail or mail, preferred retail or mail. Usually tier one and two medications are going to be at no cost if you get them in the mail for 90 day supply. And for the brand names and for everything else, it's usually, well, for this plan, it's, you know, buy two, get one free, right? The preferred mill 90 day supply is only twice the uh, 30 day supply, not three times. Usually specialty tier medications are things that need to be refrigerated, you know, properly stored and delivered and delivered from a specialty pharmacy. And for this plan, it's a 31% coinsurance. So just, just for uh, educational purposes, 31% is actually more than the 25% in the donut hole. So for tier five medications, this is a lot of plans are like this. Some of the plans even have the specialty tier charge at 50%. A lot of times when they reach the donut hole or the coverage gap, these specialty tier medications become cheaper. So here are some things you should know about the prescription drug, um, the preferred mail versus standard retail, excluded drugs. So this plan uh, has drugs that they cover at a generic level only. And also they have uh, a little disclosure here about extra help. Coverage gap, catastrophic, all stuff about the Part D, which you do need to go through during the summary benefits. Okay, so additional covered benefits. These are things that Medicare normally doesn't cover, although Medicare does cover chiropractic care for um, what's called subligation, sub subflexion. It's pretty much an alignment. So Medicare will pay for one-time alignment after the uh, primary care doctor has referred them. Home health agency, this is if they need to send care at home for certain things like physical therapy, occupational therapy, speech therapy, um, things of that nature. Also keep in mind though that sometimes there is a copay even though there's a zero copay here. I've seen where the speech, speech therapy, occupational therapy, if they go to the home, they have to pay. Substance abuse, they pay for this too. It's similar to the mental health copays. It's a $40 copay. Opioid treatment services, also the same. It's just they're breaking it down into smaller things. Dialysis, 20%. Um, over-the-counter health items. This plan has an over-the-counter benefit. So they have $400 a year and they can go either through mail order and I believe next year they're going to give them a card uh, that they can use to purchase items from Walgreens and CVS. Could be Walmart too, I'm not 100% sure on that. Meals post-acute. So what happens if you go to the hospital? You will get a maximum of three meals per day for up to 14 days. And for chronic meal, this is due to like lifestyle modifications or if you have chronic conditions that require changing of a meal. And of course, both of these have to be authorized by the plan. Uh, you can get a meal benefit. I have never used these from this company, so I don't know who exactly their vendor is. I would suggest um, when you do have members who are interested in this service that you would call, not call, sorry, email. Uh, I'll send you the emails 
who you would call for your local market, but they would be able to give you an idea of who and how um, these things get delivered. DME, this is the wheelchair oxygen type deal. It's all 20%, even prosthetics, uh, things like artificial limbs or any kind of uh, a brace, like a knee brace, those things would be 20%. Diabetic monitoring supplies. So this is like a blood glucose monitor, test strips, lancets, etc. Those things, if you get it through an in-network preferred pharmacy and use the preferred brand types that this plan uses, it's a zero percent, a zero dollar copay. If you have patients who are clients who are on or using test strips and diabetes monitors, make sure you check which uh, brand this one covers because. A lot of my clients still do this, even though they, this is a free benefit, they'll just go and buy their own because for whatever reason, they like the brand that they use. Medical supplies. So medical supplies like durable medical equipment, all 20%. And all of these things do require a prior authorization. Podiatry services. This is like for people who have diabetes and need their uh, feet checked. It's a specialist specialist visits 35 tier 1 50 tier 2 where you have diabetes really nerve damage fitness so this plan has a uh, wellness program with the ymca additional routine annual physical this is very gray i've never had anyone do this and most physicians don't know what this is either so before you know talking about this i would mention that you know most people don't do this one 24 minutes advanced advice line this one too you can call it but most people don't use it routine acupuncture services this one is new and if you have chronic low back pain you're able to get acupuncture now medicare started covering acupuncture i believe in 2020 so this is something new to medicare that medicare does cover you will most likely need a pa or prior authorization after six visits i believe and you will need a referral even though there's no R here, I, I spoke to the local uh, market and they said that for the value plan, even for the Liberty plan, Ohana Well Care requires a referral from the primary care doc. And that's pretty much it. Um, everything else is uh, part of compliance and we'll go over those things when we go over the different pieces of a compliant presentation.